You know, it's pretty funny. For the past like five or maybe six videos, my end card where you guys hit subscribe or check out Enthusiast or go watch another video, rather than saying hit that subscribe button, it said hit that subscribe button, B-O-T-T-O-N. And I'm finally just catching on. What is going on guys? Good day, good day. I hope you all are having an outstanding day. Let me just, let me just, let me just talk about the weather here real quick. My, oh my. It is lovely to see such a blue sky. It has been way too long since the sun has been out and I, huh, I honestly don't even feel like it is Pennsylvania anymore around here. I feel like I'm living in Seattle. You know, I just want to highlight the fact that the grass is like really green and I'm honestly, I'm honestly kind of thankful that it's been raining because usually this time of the year, at least up in the Northeast, it's very brown and things are just decrepit and dead, but not so much this year. Hopefully the sun stays out for a few more days. That way you can get some good content in for you guys. Let me explain to you why I wanted to give away another ground. You know, I kind of thought a little bit more about this actually just before I turned on the camera. So my little brother, he just started his freshman year at Penn State. I'm extremely proud of him for getting there because it's a very difficult process to get accepted to a college and he did that. And I was basically helping him out. I was walking him through his syllabus, how he should plan, how he should schedule, how he should manage his time. Because if any of you know or have been through college or are currently in college or are planning to go to college, the most challenging thing that you can do is balance your time. Because nobody tells you how to do it, you have to be very entrepreneurial about it. Because entrepreneurs do not have bosses, they are their own bosses, and their time literally equates to money as they grow up. And as I'm walking him through some tips and tricks, if you will, that I've learned to hopefully help him expedite that process, I couldn't help but think about, once you graduate, life gets dramatically more challenging. Because not only then do you have responsibilities, you might have some debts, you have a job that you need to abide by and perform in and hopefully do well in, that way you can grow your income scale over time, but you also have way less time. You have less time to do things that you love. So finding time to do things that you truly love will help you stay motivated in what it is that you want. Now with that lack of time comes a little bit more money. You might be a little bit more financially constrained than other times, but trying to make a very long story short, the reason that I wanted to give away another Grom is because I have the ability to give you guys great things. And that's what I try and do all the time. Sometimes the content lacks and hey, that's just because I am a person and I wanna be very real with you all about that. But the reason that I gave away a Grom is because honestly, most people don't have the ability to just drop four grand. Now, you could go out and you could get a loan, but really, is that what matters? Do you want a $400 a month payment? Probably not. The reason that I chose a Grom rather than a truck or anything larger, not saying that I won't give away a specific truck one day. Trust me guys, I have ideas. I truly have ideas. But the reason that I chose another Grom is because, well, it's something that if you won by purchasing a shirt or two or three that, that fit real, real well, and honestly, it's something that I'm proud of. The quality of my brand is something that I hold very true and is very important to me because I feel like if anything lacks quality in life, it's immediately downgraded to the lowest level. And that's what I do and that's how I judge things. And, and for me to be able to one day give you these keys, one of you are gonna get these keys right here for this ground behind me and the mods that are behind this ground. I couldn't help myself, guys. Took it out the other day, put eight miles on it. They won't change much, but I will be taking it out from time to time to create some content with you guys and to basically just enjoy it while it's in my possession. Yeah, if you're curious, TDI is doing good. She's a little beat up, but she's good. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about, oh my. Oh. <laughs> that is a score right there, boys. Back to what I was saying, I've been getting a lot of questions about one thing in particular to the Mini Max. Now it's been a while since I've done one of these, but basically what I like to do when I get a lot of questions, and a lot of them have originated on Instagram, is address them through a video, and then the intent is to hopefully get the message across to all of those that are asking. So if I take all those questions and I roll them up into one simple question, it revolves around, was lowering this truck worth it? 
So if I had to answer in a simple way, I would say absolutely. All right, so getting back on topic, closing my tailgate, because I'm gonna need that close. Having a lower truck is very convenient. Maybe I should just quickly backtrack. So you guys know that I have the 2015 LML Duramax. It's got the Cognito four to six inch lift kit on it. I absolutely love it. It's my first diesel. I had to go up, I had to, I had to go the traditional truck guy route. A, it's huge, it's massive. And I wanted to get a big set of wheels and tires under that truck. I wanted to increase the ride quality and I wanted to really get that big truck look. I feel like that was accomplished. Now going into owning a second Duramax and possession of two currently, the 15 and now the 2004.5, which is of course the LLY, I wanted to go a completely different route with this truck. I didn't want to lift a single cab because personally I feel like they just honestly aren't suited for that type of styling. Now that doesn't go without saying that these lifted properly with the right set of wheels and tires don't look absolutely kick ass, but I knew that I could accomplish exactly the look that I was going for with a three inch drop. I didn't even want to go 22s because really on a single cab truck, personally I believe that they look a little bit disproportionate. It's just too much wheel, not enough tire, and it doesn't give it the look that I wanted. I and mean, I wanted to honestly, honestly, and I also wanted to show you guys that it doesn't take a ton of money to own and have fun with one of these trucks. I wanted to build this truck to show you guys, look, you can do very mild, lightly financially demanding modifications that make it look great. Now I'm getting a little bit off topic. So anyway, I'm getting slightly off topic. I did want to touch on the perks of how this truck's set up. So honestly, the first thing that I really love about having a lowered truck is honestly, the convenience of getting into it. There's literally no effort required. You lift one leg and you're in. And by no means am I a tall guy. I'm 5'11 and a half. I like to say the half just because it gets me that much closer to six foot. And I don't have to jump up at all. Now mind you, that is a three inch drop. So it's a little bit more aggressive than that of your standard two. But that is the first thing that I absolutely love about having a lower truck. Second to that is the fact that the bed is at hip height. My LML is like up here and I have to jump up into it all the time. Whereas this truck is super easy because I can literally just step up into it and it's very, very simple. Now, now granted you do lose some of your payload capacity when you lower the truck. So if you're looking to tow, I wouldn't lower it unless you have helper bags in the back. Now the third thing that I love is the fact that it looks awesome. I never honestly saw myself owning a lower diesel truck, but now that I have one, I can say that I really just love the look. Lower Duramax is, eh, did they ever really catch my eye? Not really. Lower trucks in general, not really. Uh, everyone says, you know, oh, well, you, uh, why would you ever lower a four by four? Well, if you're trying to build something that's a little bit quicker for the road, it completely makes sense. Uh, but I, I just, I honestly love the look of it. I, I think done right, like I had complimented earlier, it, it works, it just flows and it's natural. Now the fourth thing that I love about it is the fact that it's ridiculously easy to drive. I mean, super easy. And of course that has a lot to do with the fact that I have a single cab truck. Honestly, driving this thing is kind of like a diesel go-kart. It's very small, it's got a short wheelbase, it's relatively narrow and it goes wherever you want it to go. Now granted, it's not my Corvette, it doesn't handle like my, my old Z06, but, but it doesn't go without saying, and it doesn't discount the fact that it's extremely fun to drive. If anything, I prefer driving this truck over my LML any day of the week, just because it weighs far less and it's far easier to drive. And then honestly guys, the fifth thing, and not to state the obvious, but it's the ride quality. You will feel a significant difference in your ride quality in a lowered truck versus that of a leveled truck. I don't wanna beat a dead horse with this one, but to make a long story short, to level a truck, you have to put pressure on the torsion keys. that are like right there on the truck. They connect to a bar. On that side of the bar is the lower control arm. The more you press up on this key, the more the control arm goes down in turn, raising the front end. But generally when you level a truck, you add different keys and you basically crank them up until you get your desired level ride height is when you lower you actually take all of the tension off of those torsion keys and basically what's that what that is doing is that is allowing the front end geometries of the suspension to do their job rather than going to hit a bump and it's basically just a steel rod that's holding it in place so the ride quality has improved exponentially and for the cost to lower your truck 
to literally drop those bolts and to pay $80 for drop shackles in the rear. For me, it's an absolute no-brainer. But we need to head back to the house because we are meeting up with a friend of mine and we are doing a mod to the Mini Max. I don't know exactly how I'm going to feel about it, but it was a really cool idea that he proposed. And I said, you know what, why not? Let's go do it. Rick, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? How are you, man? Good, good. So uh, this is what we're working on here, guys. We got two surprises. Rick, Rick had approached me, got hooked graphics, uh, with some some ideas, and he said, hey, look, man, I'm gonna throw together a whole bunch of your designs onto this one piece of vinyl. I'm gonna see how it looks. And I said, all right, go right ahead. And this is how it came out. So the blowing money design, we've got passion is the priority design, we've got no warranty, no worries, we've got lift, lead, all set, repeat, and you come over to this side, you've got the holy grail, and then you got the easily seduced by boost. All these are the designs that we've collectively come up with, um, kind of in the process. So that's gonna go on the tailgate, and then we've got a pretty neat one right here, which is kind of hard to see, and that is going to go up on the back window. So experimenting with some ideas, I guess you could say. This is the experiment truck, right? So that about wraps up this upload. Thank you all for watching. Again, if you haven't hit that like button already, please go ahead and do so. My likely, you know I love you guys. Dude, you do best. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The button, not the bootin', the button. Have a great night, guys. See you in the next upload.